Uh, yesterday, I already introduced the, the progress, the commercial pro progress of what we put up. Um, this day, I would like to introduce what are we doing uh, in <coughs> IMT2020 test and uh, the finding, the new the insight according to this test. And the, the first, it's a cliche, we, we, we you know, talk about this standardization progress many times, so so just emphasizes what, what is the first what is the major values of release 15 which been frozen in September this year that 10 times user experience 20 times enhancement as compared to the LTE or 20 to 30 times capacity enhancement as compared to LTE which means that we can do a lot of enhancement of both and service uh, over this standard after the standard and for the release thing, 16 and after, that will for the ultra-reliable low latency and massive machine type communication. Uh, but uh, you, we understand currently a lot of uh, study items um, regarding this ultra-reliable low latency or uh, massive machine type, thing, uh, type communication has been addressed, but for the commercial oriented, um, we still have to wait for the finalized of release 16 or after, especially for the uh, business case. And uh, furthermore, in release 16, we understand the other non-terrestrial communications or uh, integrated access and backwards will be addressed inside release, uh, in release 16. And lots of uh, security specification also will be discussed uh, discuss over this. <coughs> yeah, having finished the first release of 5G standard, now I'll talk about the uh, spectrum. Yesterday, I also shared my viewpoints on the spectrum, which will be the first spectrums. And definitely, C-band will be the primary. We understand careers already have a C-band, and also in UK, Spain, and some other countries already have the C-band in their hand, especially in Middle East. I just fly to Brazil from Saudi there. The C-band is very popular. Some of the operators already have 200 megahertz in their hand, so they win from scratch. Especially with it, if they choose the massive MIMO technology, we know that C band is the sweet point for the massive MIMO. And uh, uh, on top of the C band, the other spectrum is still in the spot, is still, uh, also under the spotlight 2.6. 2.6, uh, there is a big news that in China, my operator, one of the operators may have the 2.6. Everybody know that China, the numbers of the sites is huge, which is very good, you know, for strengthening the ecosystem. So the, the people in the rest of the world looking at the China, also the United States, where also 2.6 is very popular, uh, two, uh, has a possibility to go for the 5G. So that's why I said the C-band 2.6, the both spectrum might be the first wave of 5G spectrum. Uh, millimeter wave, uh, previously we are not so, you know, optimistic about millimeter wave because the limitation of its uh, really, really nature. But currently, looking at the ecosystem, I think the progress of a millimeter wave is better than we expect. So maybe like two years later, we can see the prosperity of millimeter waves. But still that millimeter wave, due to its uh, propagation uh, capability, most likely it will be the complementary of a C-band or sub, uh, sub six, 6 gigahertz. About chipset readiness, as to uh, the conversation with different chipset provider, most likely this year or next year, so we'll see the chipset working on three uh, C band and 2.6. For the sub three gigahertz, for example, like 700, 600, 800, 900, or 1.8, 2.1, which has been quite often by my customers that since when you can provide a system working on these bands. Um, the, our answer is that we can provide as soon as possible because for the system to support this, to do the reforming over the existing sub-3 gigahertz is no issue. But for the chipset which support the new radio working on the 700, 800, 900, according to the roadmap we get from the vendor chipset vendors that we have to wait until 2020. So this is the information I got, if, if I am correct. You can double check my information. And uh, uh, why release 15, focusing on your mobile broadband service? We say yesterday, explain yesterday, people craving for data service. And uh, I also 
share the information of a different operator, how the DOU they change quite a lot. It just goes up, it just within one year, almost two times or three times in one year. So this data consuming trend, the vendor, sorry, the operators have to think about how to fulfill the requirements of end users, either expand your LT network or go for 5G. As far as we also provide both way for the for the operators to choose. So <clears throat> on the bottom right you will see the user experience dropping hotspot. This might be the trigger point to go for the 5G. Because even though that is LT network, the user experience rates down to four mega for the down for the downlink. <coughs> only 400 kbps for the uplink. So this might be the, as I said before, the trigger point for go for the 5G. This might be the driven force of 5G, other than the ultra reliable low latency. Even though it's promising, but still wait. The whole ecosystem is not quite ready. We have a lot of a conversation with verticals. They just don't understand why we need a public network. That's a long conversation, long journey, long journey. But I never give up the hope. Let's wait and see. Maybe 2020 or 2022, we'll see the one of the use cases rise up I mean, in terms of our reliable low latency or massive machine type communication. Well, <coughs> still propaganda, sorry for saying so. Uh, currently, we have, yesterday we say that the end-to-end -end commercial system from, from Huawei we launched on September 30, 2018. Currently, 10,000 shipments of 5G sites have been finished. And all of this shipment is massive minor supporting 5G new radio based on release 15 or 64 TRX, 32 TRX used in different country. And now I share the test details of IMT 2020 national test held in, held in China. <coughs> you see Huawei is very much involved in the test uh, and multifolded. Uh, currently we finish <coughs> or just starting all round test scenario including Sorry. Auto marker and into <coughs> lamp site. Previously, we just had one kind of uh, 5G new radio, 64 TRX. Currently, our part, if you're looking at the portfolio, product portfolio, it became more, more multifolded, include the lamp site. So, here is the statement that we are first to complete non standalone. We are the first <coughs> to complete. Sorry for saying so. We are the first to complete the non-standalone test, and we we also starting working on the indoor small cell test at slam site. Looking at performance, currently the test uh, result is quite quite good. The peak rates is 1.8 we got, and also the indoor peak rates we got 1.4 gigabps fulfill the expectation we said before. And also the latency is two milliseconds for the enhanced mobile broadband service, quite suitable for the service which is quite latency sensitive, for example, like augmented reality or virtual reality. And the supplementary uh, uplink, we call it downlink uplink decoupling. We got six times enhancement. Uh, you see, for the supplementary uplink, we've done lots of tests. Uh, currently, uh, we think that in non-standalone architecture, the supplementary uplink or decoupling might not be so, the, the benefits of a supplementary uplink might not be so obvious, but standalone really make a difference. So I think the supplementary really good things, but we still wait for the ecosystem. Uh, let's wait and see whether this supplementary uplink will be successful or not when the uh, standalone architecture and it goes everywhere. Okay, this is a uh, very good idea. Mm. Well, while we take the lead in the IODT test, we know that 5G industry cannot be success just within single hand. So that's why while we join hands with different chipset vendors, in, include Intel and High Silicons and. Yes, and also my media tech. Also the other chipset, very, very strong chipset vendors. Even though yesterday I saw their slides, didn't mention the logos of Huawei, but we understand the inter 
interoperability test is undergoing quite well currently. So I don't mention the name because they didn't mention our name. So, okay, non standalone for <coughs> protocol stack IODT test, we finish. Standalone based first call will be made soon. And also, we we'll start the enhanced mobile broadband service and ultra level latency test, and also the V2X. This is what being done. Yeah, the insight uh, after this national test and, uh, uh, and the tremendous scale trials of a 5G, we found massive MIMO is really good. It's a fundamental for reducing the cost of it per bit by like 10 times, which is the driven force for operator go for the 5G. Uh, 45, uh, 64, 64 TIX massive MIMO definitely will provide higher speed. But some operators, operators, said, operators said that we don't want a 10 gigabps. I don't quite for the data. But the other good aspect of a 64 TRX or massive MIMO is coverage enhancement. According to the test comparison, we find that 64 TRX can even get even better coverage again as compared to the current legacy LT 1.8 gigahertz. So, we have a conversation with different operator. They say that they will choose the 64 TRX in a dense server and choose like RU, the traditional 2T2R, 44R in rural area. But we think different way because coverage game. If you're looking at the pictures of the uh, CapEx components of the CapEx, device, not device, I mean equipment like base station, just, just be very minor part of that. The other is the infrastructure like the site rental cost, like the, the, like the towers, like the transmission, like the power system. So they reduce the numbers of the sites. It's the major methodology to reduce the app, CapEx and OpEx. So that's why we strongly recommend the operator thinking about using massive mining in rural area. So much so to reduce the number of the sites. We believe that is the efficient way to reduce the capex and the opex as well. Not just for the capacity, not just so that's why massive MIMO is fundamental. I think five years of uh, uh, 5G commercial deploy deployment might just justify my statement today. Let's wait and see, am I correct or just totally wrong? And uh, yes, the other uh, experience using massive MIMO that we got is XGPPS everywhere. Uh, there's a comparison in, in one of the major cities in China. The 5G, we got a 2.5 gigabps peak rate. The average is LTE 100 megabps. Uh, so almost 25 times. We feel that our expectation that 20 to 30 times of capacity enhancement. And it, it, this kind of service, this kind of capacity may facilitate, facilitate the diversified enhanced mobile broadband service. You see, when we talk about enhanced mobile broadband service, in retrospect, in the past 40 years of the mobile industry, just two basic services has been cultivated. The first is the voice service, start from the first generation, getting momentum in the second generation GSM, GSMA, and flying to the peak in the third generation, UMTS. The second basic service is mobile video service, always say the mobile internet. Start from UMTS, getting the momentum of the fourth generation, say LTE. And we believe that this mobile internet will fly to the peak in the fifth generation, 5G. So what is the third new basic information service? Maybe it is mobile virtual reality. Maybe it's mobile augmented rea reality. Nobody knows. Just like iPhone, like a bombshell to the whole mobile industries. That time, which trigger or stimulate the prosperity of the UMTS network everywhere. Maybe there's a service out there waiting for the network, getting ready for. So it's like chicken and egg. I was quite often being asked, by the operator, what, 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 is the, what is the driven force? What use case should be? I think it's like gambling. Nobody knows exactly. But either wait 
or just do it in advance, waiting for this kind of service, and win from scratch, as compared to the other operator who just wait, I think it's up to the operator's strategy. Like U Plus, like, sorry for mentioning the name, like BDE is, the, is one of the operators who is, you know, forward thinking. That's why they just no wait. Just go for the 5G, even though the, 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 the driven force is crystal clear. They just barely believe that. The advance of the network is their winning secret. Okay, this, sorry. <laughs> now stand on, stand on, no more dilemma because this information for quite, quite I have to carry that for so many years. That which one to choose is dilemma. But as long as our access network support both, I think that this is no more dilemma for the operator. And if I have time later after this stage, we can discuss about this. Yeah, 5G provides better security than ever. Yesterday I introduced that to so 255 algorithm, the privacy protection, interconnection securities, and air interface protection all being addressed inside 5G. So one word as an ending, 5G is better than ever in terms of security. That's all for my, for my presentation, sorry. Sorry. <laughs>